What a week in the world of New York sports. So much to talk about, but we've got to get into the hottest three topics of the week. And this week, we're going to discuss them with one of the best content creators in the Big Apple. He is the host of the Subway to Shape podcast. You've seen him on many videos with me this year. Now, for the first time, we meet in person. Joining me in studio, my guy. Anthony Rivera. Anthony, what's going on, man? Oh, Dexter, it's an honor to be here. Like we said, you know, uh, we've talked for so many times, and like yeah. this is the first time in person, so wild experience, so I appreciate it. Yeah, like I said, man, you're one of the best content creators out there. Thank I, you. I love the work you do around the Mets with your podcast, and this is why you've been on so much with me this year. And so I had to get you to the Rapid Rundown. I had to get you on the show. People, Anthony could talk a little bit more than the Mets. That's what I wanted people to know. They could talk a little bit more than the Mets. So, Anthony, we're going to do this we're going to get into the hottest topics of this week. Now, what we're going to talk about this week, we're going to talk about the Knicks losing Mitchell Robinson to an ankle injury. And in offseason, it's been quiet for the Mets. You know, Anthony's got something to say about that. But first, we got to talk about DeVito mania. Anthony, Tommy DeVito, the hype train around him just keeps on rolling, right? Oh, yeah. DeVito, he led the G-Men to a huge comeback win over the Packers on Monday night. He's won three games in a row as a starter, pretty hot. Do the Giants have something with DeVito as a player that maybe you could be a part of their roster going forward? Or for you, is it a situation where you're like, I need to see more from him? No, I definitely need to see more. But, you know, when you're winning and winning being three and one, you got to keep going with it. Uh, unfortunately for Tyra Taylor, that means that he's going to have to sit on the bench for now. And, you know, who knows? Maybe there'll be a point in time where he has to come back. But for now, you got to roll with DeVito, the whole DeVito mania and what we're seeing at a giant stadium, the old Sopranos gig thing, too, that's going on. You just got to go with it. And if he keeps winning, you keep playing him. You got to keep playing him. I, it's funny in this, you mentioned that about Tyrod Taylor, right? Because I kind of feel a little bit bad for Tyrod Taylor. He's always had these bad breaks, right? He's yep. close to getting an opportunity to start, and then it just doesn't happen. But I'm kind of with you. You got to ride the hot hand. It's good for the Giants. You yeah. get, they get to see something from this kid. Can he work for them as a backup? And that's kind of going to lead to my next question, because you talked about all the attention around DeVito, right? We've seen it just increase and increase and mm -hmm. increase. And it's beautiful, right? His family had the large tailgate before the Monday night game. Are you concerned that the attention might become too much for DeVito? And do you look at everything around him? It's like, is this another Jeremy Lin type story? Where, and I mean that in the sense of where like a New York athlete provides a spark to the team, but it ends up being short-lived. Do you think this could be the situation that we're looking at? Well, I, that was actually the first thing I thought of. I was mm. like, wow, this does feel like the Jer Jeremy Lin situation. I, I think the difference is, like, you still have Daniel Jones, who, you know, they paid a lot of money to, to be the starting quarterback. And I feel that once the season's over, you're going to go back to Daniel Jones. And if that doesn't work out, maybe they give uh, DeVito an opportunity. But, you know, right now, like I said, you ride the hot hand. And think about this. The Giants are only one game out of the playoff spot, one out of the wild card spot. And if they can keep winning, it's all better for them. But, you know, they do have the Eagles in two out of the four weeks. So it might be a little bit tough but you know you keep riding DeVito mania as much as you can see I see I like I like what you did there you did, you, get, you gave the Giants fans some hope <laughs> Giants fans are five and eight they're like okay is it, we got a chance we've got a chance but I'm, I'm with you you got to ride it however long could be we saw what happened with the Knicks with Linsanity you just sometimes you just got to enjoy yeah, the wave man right? just got to go with it have a little fun you know it started off not great season and right. we all thought it was going to be a miserable season all thinking about maybe the Giants might draft the top quarterback and, mm -hmm. and see what they can do there but you know now being one game out you got to have a little hope and you got to have a little fun DeVito's having fun the team is having fun the fans are having fun and that's all you can ask for nothing wrong with having a little fun we all want to win but if you can have some fun while you're doing it that's pretty good too all right, next, we got to talk some Knickerbocker basketball. Oh, yeah. I know you're excited for this one, too. So the Knicks, they announced on Monday that Mitchell Robinson would undergo ankle surgery this week. He's going to be sidelined for at least 8 to 10 weeks. On a scale of 1 to 10, how concerned are you about the Knicks being able to keep their head above water without their best rebounder and best interior defender? That's an important part, right? Best rebounder, uh, best defender, and it, it hurts them, right? Eight to ten weeks is a lot of time to lose Mitchell Robinson, who is a key cog for all the reasons that we talked about. And not having him around, if the Knicks can, you know, keep themselves afloat, I think they'll be okay. They really count on, you know, Jalen Brunson. They count on Julius Randle and R.J. Barrett. If those three guys are, you know, running on all cylinders, 
that's pretty huge for them. Just keep afloat until Mitchell can come back. But it's really tough with, you know, Mitchell being so injury prone. I know he played, I think it was 72 games in 2021-2022. Besides that, every other season, 66 games or less. Uh, it's, he's got to stay healthy if, if this Nick team is going to get to that next plateau uh, in, in the postseason. He always seems to have a stretch where he's out for a period of time. And it's a really tough break for him with this ankle injury. And it's tough for the Knicks. But it was an interesting week, this week for the Knicks, right? Because you saw them beat the Raptors. Then they began a five-game road trip with a loss to the lowly Jazz. Knicks fans were not happy about that. And then they have a thrilling win on Friday night over the Suns where Jalen Brunson gives you a 50-piece. Yep. Where are you on this Knicks squad, right? Because they're 14-10 and 10 right now. And there's a lot of different talk about what they should do and where they're at. But do you think it's time for this team to shake things up? Is it time for a trade? How do you view it? You know, I think you got to give it a little bit of time. I like to say that, and we've talked about this even with the Mets. Like, it's, I still kind of feel it's a little early, especially with the injury, to make a trade right now and, you know, probably trade future assets that you're probably going to need later on in the season. So I don't want them to jump the gun. Obviously, they brought back uh, Taj Gibson, so we'll see what happens. Let's see what they can do with Jericho Sims and uh, Hartenstein and see if they can, you know, provide them with a little, you know, pop. I know that... In the game against Phoenix, they I think it was like 42-38 with the rebound, so it, it, it didn't work their way. But let's give these guys an opportunity. If they can do it, maybe hold on for a little bit, wait for Robinson to come back. If not, if they're struggling, then maybe it's time to pull the trigger on a trade. But I don't want to jump the gun just yet. Yeah, a little bit too early. 14-10, and 10. Knicks yeah. are still sitting in a pretty good position, and we'll see how they do going up there in the tough stretch right now where they're playing 10 consecutive opponents that are above 500 or better. So... We'll see how it goes yeah. with the Knicks. We shall see. All right, here we go. This is the time. Anthony, you know you're here, host of the Subway to Shade podcast. We have to talk some Mets baseball. Oh, yeah. You knew that we have to do this. <laughs> There's no way I could have you up here for the first time meeting you. We don't talk Mets baseball. That would just be wrong. It would be absolutely wrong. In terms of the offseason for the Mets, let's just be real. It's been quiet. It's oh, been yeah. very quiet. When you look at what other teams have done, like the Dodgers landing Otani, Yankees trading for Soto, do you think after a disappointing 2023 season that it's imperative that the Mets bringing in a big name? Is it? Do they have to do that this offseason? Do the Mets need to bring a big name to Flushing? I don't know if it's imperative. It would be good for not only the front office to build some goodwill with the fan base who's very frustrated and, and wants to see – this team win. Uh, the, the patience is is not something right now that the Mets fans have, and um, you know bringing in a big name like a Yamamoto, which is probably the biggest name you could ba- bring in right now. They were never going to get Juan Soto in a trade. They didn't have the assets. Um, they weren't going to sign Otani. It seemed like the writing was on the wall for him to sign with the uh, Los Angeles Dodgers. So those guys, I, I can't get upset about about not signing, but. You know, when I look at free agency right now, and it's been very frustrating. The hot stove has been very cold, uh, (laughs) definitely in Queens. And um, I always look at it as like, are any of the guys that have signed already, are any of those players that I would be like, you know what, I really wish I would have signed that guy. There's been none. There's still a lot of guys out there. You have the Jordan Montgomery's out there. Obviously, Yamamoto's still out there on offense. Soler, Teoscar Hernandez. So there's still options available. So I don't want to say it's imperative. This team is still in that kind of retooling mode. And, you know, Steve Cohen mentioned it. Billy Epler mentioned it before he left. And so did David Stearns at the GM and winter meetings. So uh, I'm going to trust in them. The front office is just beginning. And let's see what they can do. Let's see if they can actually retool this team to be competitive next year. And, you know, if you're competitive, there's an opportunity to make the postseason. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see what happens there. You mentioned a bunch of names there. You're right. There's still a lot out there. You can't just get disappointed about what can happen with Otani and Soto, right? But who's still out there in terms of those players you mentioned via trade or free agency that for your holiday wish list, I'm giving you a holiday wish list, Anthony. Who's number one in your holiday wish list right now for the New York Mets? Yeah, uh, it, it's definitely uh, Yoshinobu Yamamoto. That's he him. is yeah. He is the guy that I want the Mets to gift wrap to me this holiday season. And, 
you know, if they don't get them, I, you know, it's not because they didn't try. I, I think that the Mets need to be the team, no matter what the cost is, to outbid everybody else because it shows, you know, two things that at least one, they tried. And if he didn't want to come here, it wasn't because the Mets didn't offer him enough money. Um, so he's definitely the guy that I want. And if it doesn't work out that way, I've talked about on the podcast, I posted on YouTube about, you know, bringing in a guy like uh, a Jordan Montgomery. There's also uh, Shota Imanaga, who's another uh, Japanese import that they could possibly bring in. And then uh, on a smaller scale in pitching, uh, Lucas Giolito for the back end of the rotation to go with uh, Luis Severino, who the Mets signed. And offensively, obviously there's, you know, Teoscar Hernandez and uh, Jorge Soler, DH guys, could possibly put him in the outfield. But one guy that I really want is uh, Justin Turner. It's time to bring Justin Turner back home. I think he would be nice to be a DH uh, play every so often and, you know, spell the guys at third who are still learning like uh, Brett Beatty and um, uh, Mark Viento. So if you could help those kids out, you know, and, and you know, build your own equity and, and trying to make this roster better, you got to go out and do it. So I say bring Justin Turner back home. Okay, bringing Justin Turner back. And the big New York Post uh, Mets beat reporter Mike Puma, he reported on Friday that there have been some talks between both sides about that. So maybe we see them go back in. This just came to me as we were talking about the Mets, and this is my producers don't even know we're doing this. Got a bonus question here for you. Sure, bonus sure. question. And it goes to something you and I have talked about off camera, okay? The Mets have yet to do a City Connect jersey. Mm. We haven't seen that. What do you want to do? you feel like 2023 is the time, 2024, I should say, is the time for the Mets to finally have a City Connect jersey? And what do you want it to look like? Because you and I have talked about this, and I like some of your ideas behind this. I want you yeah, to share yeah. with people. I, you know, I, I wish they would, like, work with my friend Dan Abrams, these athletic logos. I don't know if you've seen some I of have. this stuff. He, yeah. I, I bought a jersey from him, um, a Queens jersey, with the, the Subway logo and all that. I would love to see that. Or even this right here. This, this New York script. We've talked about We've it talked so many about times. It. Yep. Bring back the New York script. I, I love that. Um, I, I definitely would like to see what they can do. Um, and hopefully it, it's something really cool and nice that everyone would want to, to buy because every time the Mets would make a jersey in the past, especially in the Wilpon days, Fans didn't like it so much, so hopefully uh, they can get it right this time around. <laughs> yeah, and I feel, I, you and I have talked about this, I feel like the old school script that you have across your chest right there for the 80s, it will be a nice touch. It goes back to that era. Yep. You know, you, you're playing on some tradition there. You're playing on an era of, a special era for a lot of Mets fans. I like to see it happen, man. You know, the funny thing is I see it a lot more now. Like, I yeah. have the shirt. I've seen the hat. You go to the store. They actually have a pair of shorts that, you know, some of the players I've been seeing were like Lindor and uh, Francisco that, Alvarez. Yes. It's like a $400 pair of shorts, but it has that new, old New York style logo. I even have the jersey of it because I love it so much. I know it wasn't one of the greatest times. Uh, like 1987 was the only year that they used it, and that wasn't a great year for the Mets. But you nope. know what? It's time to to make some changes and, and try something new and I like maybe, it. maybe go back and get some retro yeah, I like, I like going back with a little bit of a retro yeah. look. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens there with the City Connect jersey. It's time for the Mets to have one. But we're at the end of all the topics. We talked about the three hottest topics in New York sports. That is Anthony Rivera. Please check out his podcast, Subway to Shade Podcast. It is a great one for Mets fans. Guys, very knowledgeable about the Mets. Knowledgeable about everything we learn in New York sports, as you can see. And, Anthony, you're going to come back, right? You're going to come back on the show. Absolutely. Whenever you need me, I'll be here. There we go. That's my guy, Anthony Rivera. Check him out. Until next time, guys. Peace.